everybody, I'm the Femi or VP Welfare and welcome to the Shag Week podcast. So for those who don't know, Shag Week stands for Sexual Health Awareness and Guidance Week. So we've collected some feedback from type forms and we're going to discuss some of the topics and some of the questions and topics that you've submitted in as well. So I have some guests on this podcast so I'll allow them to introduce themselves. I'm Amaya, I'm 24, I am single, and is that, is that all? What, what else am I? That's it? Straight. Oh, I'm straight! <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight! <laughs> uh, hey, uh, I'm James, 21, uh, in a relationship, and I'm bisexual. Uh, I'm Carlos, I'm 23, I'm straight, and I'm also in a complicated thing. <laughs> Um, I'm Holly, uh, I'm 21, uh, I'm bisexual, and I am engaged. Perfect. I'm Femi, I'm 23, I'm bisexual, and I'm single as fuck. (laughs) 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 So, um, we had a lot of responses come in. Um, We did have the majority of responses come in from women, so that'd be quite interesting. 40% of our responses have, have said that they've had sexual partners between the number of one and three. So I think, you know, quite interesting, quite low. I think How, really. how low is it? Um, one to three sexual partners, the majority of our sponsors have had. Wow, that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> well, I think it depends on what you class as sexual partner. Because I think if I oh, ask, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think if I ask people, um, have you done other stuff, you know, it might be different in people said so. Okay. I think it depends a lot on, on the person. I, I think throughout the podcast it's gonna be like that it depends a lot on the person but I feel like I mean one person can have a relationship for many years so I think that's maybe one of the things that can be happening there Uh, I would still classify a sexual partner though as someone you're having sex with I would personally like like, that's a body count but like sexuality (laughs) plays into it though I know so many gay guys will be like oh like I've only slept with like four people but then if you're talking about like bits then it's like it's like a completely different list it's like some pe- some people doing that are going, oh, like I've slept with three people, yeah, but then like I've done other stuff with like twenty or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> like it's like so yeah. different. The majority yeah. of people will class sex as penetration. Yeah. Mm. Anything well. less than that is not sex in most people's minds. So. But you're still doing sexual things because in yeah. that respect, then <laughs> like all lesbians would still be virgins then if we're counting sex as just penetration. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. But yeah. I suppose so. I mean. Uh, for our responses as well, 98% of people s- admitted that they'd masturbated before. So, you know what, I have to say congrats for people for being honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's human nature, no? Yeah. I mean, and I also asked the question, how often do people masturbate? Most people said less than once a week. But the second most um, popular question <laughs> was... <laughs> lying. <once> <laughs> 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 what, do you think people are lying when saying I less than once lying. a week? 100%. Uh, yeah, I feel... I mean, I think I mean, there's single. a little taboo on, <laughs> on masturbation for sure, and I mean, less than once a week. I mean, it can happen, I mean, for sure there's people that doesn't like it that much, but I feel like, I don't know, less than a week. Is it depends on if you're single or not. Mm. Also, Because if you're in a relationship, then less than one a week makes sense, I think. I think. <laughs> I yeah. guess it also depends how like active you are as well. Like if you're actively like having hookups, you probably don't sit at home alone masturbating <laughs> anymore. Like well, you wouldn't need to. That's really bad. Oh, <laughs> this is really really bad. You just have to do it afterwards. I mean, some people consider it cheating. I've seen True. That. Yeah. Ooh, I don't yeah. think that's cheating. No. <laughs> no. 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 I think it's something you by yourself. And, I mean, if you enjoy it, you enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. On that topic of masturbation, we also ask people, do they have any sex toys? Yes, we are talking about all the very taboo subjects. As in Shag Week, we're about talking about all the uncomfortable stuff, you know, and getting rid of the taboo that like is cringe or weird or gross to talk about sex. So, yeah, out of the everyone that answered the survey, 51% of people said they had sex toys. As they should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do any of you guys have any sex toys? I have a vibrator. I have like stuff. Oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what I have, oh. but like, I feel like yeah. But I feel like everyone at some point buys something. Yeah. Like I feel like that you very rarely go in a relationship where it's like oh like we get one thing or like we should like try a dildo or like try this or try that. Like vibrators, like I think is like the main yeah. thing that everyone has at least once. Yeah, for sure. 
And people in relationships should also have vibrators. If you don't, go get a vibrator. Yeah. <laughs> or ha oh, handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. Handcuffs yeah. count. Like. Would you count that? I would. I mean, if you've got other, yeah, but like if you've got other reasons for handcuffs, I'd be more worried. <laughs> <laughs> like if that's not the reason they're in your house and you're not a policeman, then I I would be worried. <laughs> but yeah, I completely. Agree. I mean, I know a lot of guys that feel like maybe if their girlfriend or someone has a sex toy, maybe it's a little bit it's a little bit in their ego, I guess. Yeah. Mm. But. Uh, I completely agree with having sex toys and even I have given gifts. <laughs> like Oh okay. So, so something, nice. Nice. Yeah. Something, yeah. something good to if you want to give a good gift, I feel that's one some of the, inspo for Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I there did get one as a Christmas present, so nice. <laughs> nice. I think I got my friend one once before and her boyfriend actually threw it out. Oh. Really? Which I was like, what a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That was a really good correction on the word I knew you were going to use. <laughs> <laughs> the hesitation. We also asked people wh whether they'd watch porn. 87% people admitted that they'd watch porn. We asked how often, and 69%, funny enough, said um, <laughs> less than once a week. 13% once a week, and 10% of people more than five times a week. I think that's crazy. What, Crazy. How how do you have for one? How do you have the spare time to watch porn like up to five times a week? Because even that's like almost once every work day. <laughs> like it just you come home from work and you just need to de stress. Yeah. But I think I think it's healthy to watch it. I don't think it's healthy to watch it that much though. Yeah. I feel like the like the more you watch it, the worse it gets. Well, because it's addicting. I feel like yeah. that's the difference. But but I mean, people do come back home from work and have oh, sex yeah. every day, so it's not really that different. But that specific talk, it's not like healthy, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's a little different. Yeah, I guess you can get uh, addicted sometimes. But uh, yeah, I mean, it depends also if you're in a relationship, I feel like, mm. because if you're in a relationship, I feel you don't watch it as much, maybe. Unless you're watching yeah. it together. That's all I was gonna I say. Know. I've like, never done that. No, I've not. I, I don't think I would want to do that. It makes me uncomfy. Yeah. <laughs> but on their own time, if they know. <laughs> <laughs> No, and also if you watch it together, you'd have to be like, so what do you typically watch? You guys know, One time I saw it on a guy's browser and I was mortified. I was like, put that away. I don't think <laughs> I, don't, ever, I don't wanna yeah. know. I'd never wanna know what like my like type of porn my partner watches. Oh, I'd be so scared. Like I feel like you'd learn stuff about them that, that you don't know wanna know. What I know. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you've answered the question, but like some people would consider porn cheating as yeah. well. Like mm. I, I know one of my friends is like um, her and her boyfriend have basically both been like, no, we don't want to even think about another human being now that we are together. Yeah, I also know girls that have, like, stand on mm. that. They're like, that's cheating. But I don't get how you can just, like, turn it off like that. Turn what off? Like, how can you just decide that you're not attracted to other people? Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? mean? Like, you're always going to be Yeah, like, you can't, people, you can't just walk down the street and, like, not look at someone and go, oh, my God, they're attractive. That's weird if like, you it's don't. one thing to act on that. Yeah. But, like, just to find people attractive, I think it's, like, crazy to not think you can do that. I would say the only time porn is like cheating is if you're not having sex with your partner and you'd prefer to do that. Like, but how do you know if they prefer that? That's there's a movie, Don John, where it happens where he like leaves the room to go watch porn because he's addicted. Like, that's when it's a problem. There, it's a good movie you should watch. That also possibly goes into people's sexualities as well because if you have someone who's asexual, they might be okay with masturbation, but they're not okay with having sex with a partner. Right. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, I feel like it gets into cheating if you're actually having to like if you have your partner there and then you have to watch porn why don't you like go yeah. with your partner you know mm -hmm. that that's what i feel like yeah so we all i also did ask the question whether people have tried to replicate something they've seen in porn so most people said no 61 percent of people said no 38 percent of people said yes and i did, did ask them to give some details <laughs> so i do love free text question so I'm going to go through some of the responses. So someone said, um, making her squirt, cock hold. I did have to Google that one. <laughs> 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 um, fake taxi. Yeah. Um, and, oh, I've seen so lots of the other responses. So um, choking as well. And there was lots of somewhere. But um, I've mixed up my sheets. I love that when that happens. Um, 
Yeah, have you, any of you guys tried to replicate anything you've seen? No. Porn? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried to replicate it, but I will say I've take like, you know, I've learned a little bit about like moaning. <laughs> like I was like, okay, that sounds kind of good. Like I might try that. Expose myself. Like, I like that picture. Like, yeah. I'll copy that. <laughs> I feel like that actually is relevant because, like, I mean, not about porn, but like, mm. sometimes I've had guys have some strange moans that I'm like, you should work you should, on that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but have you ever, like, faked a moan? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, I don't give them satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> Just sits there in silence. <laughs> so you don't fake orgasms? No, I don't get no. I just sit. Never. I, I mean, I've had guys afterwards be like, "Did you?" And I'm like, "No, no." Nope. I have said that, but I've also faked many times. Have you ever faked, or for the both of you, can as a guy, I, can you, you fake these, it? I don't, I don't know if you, you can fake yeah, it. if you get that condom quick, off quick enough, they don't need to see what's in it. I. Like I, you whip it off, that, you throw it away. If, I've, I've unless seen they go be looking, quick about yeah. it, and you're like. <laughs> unless, that girl, unless that girl or guy goes looking for that condom, or they they don't need to know if you finished or not. Like, <laughs> you can oh, fake it. That's mortifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine you see the Just condom the next fit. day, like, oh. <laughs> that's the thing, yeah. I mean, going going back to the topic, I feel it's kind of scary to want to replicate a lot of things from porn. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, they're actors, and they do that for, for a living, I guess. And there's some stuff that... You could say they're done by professionals. <laughs> so let's say you want to try something like that. Maybe it's not going to work the same way. So maybe you should be careful with Practice trying. Practice first, you yeah. know, in the mirror. <laughs> it's also just really gross half the time. Like, I don't, I don't look at it and think, wow, that's attractive. That's, like, what I skip of, like, these horrendous, like, they always, I don't know. A lot of porn is obviously, like, um, objectifying women, right? That's a big thing. Mm. So the the way that they like treat women in porn is not even in like a BDSM kind of way thing. It's literally just Jesus Christ, I I think you might actually kill her if you were allowed to. It's just kind of terrifying. So like it's not I don't want to recreate that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it depends on what kind of porn you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking the same, the mm. same thing. There, there's some kind of porn that it's <laughs> like scary. Like, but yeah, there's some other kind of porn that it's a little more, let's say, soft. But like, <laughs> at the same time, I wouldn't recommend recreating everything you see. No. Just I think like the old porn, like you, where was that? Like you know when they would do like the stories, like the bars. Yeah. yeah. The voiceover, <laughs> it was like you know it was kind of there's a well, plot the to it. Was in the pizza box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. I just mean like you know when there was like a story and it was kind of like it felt a little bit more like acting than like yeah. watching someone get violated. Like you're watching, you're like, oh, they clearly rehearsed this. It's yeah. fine. Like you don't do this in like the first take. It's like I can do that. Like. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, one of the responses which I quite liked is they said, I don't think I've tried to replicate something, but I've probably learned a lot of things about different positions from watching porn. So, you know, some positions, and it's true, you, some positions you learn from porn. I think for gay sex, that's true. I learned most of my knowledge of gay sex is from porn. Because, like, I, I didn't grow up with any, like, gay relatives. So I, <laughs> no, I like, didn't have a gay uncle guiding me. So I feel like for gay people, I think that's definitely, like, where you learn, like, the difference. Especially because, like, you go into it thinking there's just one position. Yeah. If you if all you know is straight sex. Yeah. And at a young age especially. So I think that helps. And then, like, the different things that we do that straight people might not do as well. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I have some friends of all sexual orientations. They've told me some things that they do. I'm like, I didn't know you could do that. Like, that's <laughs> Interesting. I think guys could learn a few things from porn, though. Like, I think you could definitely learn how to give head a little better from yeah. porn. I think guys should work on that. <laughs> if they're going to watch, might as well take <laughs> So we also asked people, what are their favorite sex positions? So we did get a range. I think the majority I'm seeing here are cowgirl and doggy, which is quite interesting. So I asked the panel, what are your, do you know, or ask what are your favorite and least favorites? If anyone's willing to answer. I think I have a favorite. Do I? No. <laughs> I'm a lover girl. I like missionary. I, I don't like doggy or cowgirl. That makes me feel like objective. I don't know, like a horse or something. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, if we had to say least favorite, like cowboy, cowgirl, just because like 
sometimes like when you're drunk and you do it, like you get really motion sick, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> like you're really drunk, it's like you're already dizzy and then you're like, no, it's getting worse. But like you don't want to stop because like that's awkward. Mm. So yeah, that's my least favorite <laughs> for that specific reason. Yeah, with doggy, I feel like you're just getting fucked. There's no yeah, pattern there. Like, yeah, you're not facing each other, you're just yeah. like looking at the wall most of the time. Yeah, I'm like, are they even like, I'm, are they picturing someone else? Like, ugh. Sometimes that's needed though. <laughs> <laughs> like no, like for hookups. If I'm having, especially a gay hookup, I don't think I'd want to see their face all the time. <laughs> like, at least I don't have to look. Like, I feel like it, it depends on the type of sex. That's fair. For me, I, I also agree with the part of, like, facing each other. I feel that it depends on what, what you are with the person, I guess. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I feel like, yeah, sometimes facing the person makes it a little bit more personal and more, yeah. um, let's say... Intimate? Intimate, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I could agree with that, but at the same time, yeah, you don't get that kind of like intimate moment if you're doing other positions that you're not facing each other, I feel like. I mean, I agree, I agree with you. I, don't, I like, like just missionary. Yeah. But also, like, I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah, I agree. But also, I'm like, I can't, I can't physically do doggy just because that is the prime position to just, like, smack into my cervix. And it hurts <laughs> so much that I just, I can't physically do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, we also asked people how many times a week are they having sex. 24% said two to three times a week. 45% said less than a week. Which is quite interesting because I think, I think if you're like single, you you can't guarantee when you're next having sex, so it's gonna be <laughs> less than yeah, what to yeah, definitely. What would you say is the perfect number? I think in your first year of a relationship, this is maybe controversial. I think you should be having sex like f the first year, like five times a week. Really? I I think in the beginnings of my relationships, I'd have sex like every day. I'd say like actual sex like three times a week, and then like. Other yeah, stuff, every stuff like yeah, every yeah. now like on the rest of the days like i feel like you should do something at the with very them. least yeah. i agree three times a week find the time because like i come back from work i'm tired <laughs> i eat on my dinner and i go to bed I know, the I think with the first year of relationships like the honeymoon stage yeah. you know so like at that point like if you're not wanting to rip each other's clothes off maybe i'll give six months how about that maybe not the first year six months though you should want to every time you see that person I agree with that totally I, I would say the perfect number would be four a week it's probably better. I was going to say once or twice a week. What? <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. How often are you seeing them every day? Well, if you want to, like, with my ex, we saw each other, like, three times a week. Because uh, we're both working. Yeah. Mm. So, you know. Oh, well, yeah, it depends a lot on the time. If you, also, if you're living together. Or yeah, yeah. That, that, that is a factor, but... Once a week is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would also agree with that once yeah. a week. Yeah. Tough. Right. 61% of people that filled in the survey said they have never been tested for an STD or an STI. 61%. That is mm. disgusting. That's hard. I, I did, so I did talk to some of my fellow student leaders and we had a quite a big discussion about this in the office. And we did say um, there was a discussion about whether you needed to get tested if you only slept with one person. Mm -hmm. Have they been with other people? Yeah. That is true. But well, I suppose it depends. If, you've only, if both of you've only slept with each other. Then probably but it's still yeah. always good to get tested. Yeah. I mean, from the, from the gay side of it, I'm like, I would always get tested no matter what. Because I, I don't know who else I've slept with. Yeah. And like, I don't want to get AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's kind of like, I feel like from that point of view, like I always say that it's just better, it's better safe than sorry. Like it's not going to hurt to get tested. And I feel like you'd feel so much better knowing then than like having to find out later on and finding out that like something you've done like six months ago is not going to ruin your life. Yeah. yeah. So say that when you sleep with someone, you sleep with all the yeah. other ones yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they've slept with 20 people, you've now slept with those 20 I mean, people. The big factor obviously is if you're using, if you're not using protection. Yeah. Like I feel like if I were to sleep with someone and not use protection, I should definitely go get tested. Yeah, no like what. especially as like a single person, they're single, like. I would still mm. get tested even though you use protection. Cause you never know. Like, like yeah, you could, from split. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true, but I think it's more dire if you don't use yeah, protection. I mean, it's I'm more like I need to go do this yeah. versus like yeah. 
Mm -hmm. A mean test is very simple. Like, I don't know how it works so for scary. guys, but like you just for girls, it's just a fingerprint blood thing and swap. It just makes me nervous. Like every time I go, I'm like looking at the signs and like yeah. looking at the posters about all this. <laughs> oh, do you go in person? Yeah. I can't do it virtually. <laughs> no, but you can get like the at home test. Oh. Yeah. I've never done that in the US. I had to go to this very sketchy STD <laughs> place. It was like in large letters, like sexually transmitted disease center. I was mortified. I'm that sort of person that I do it in person just because like I'm really lazy and forgetful. <laughs> like I feel like if I get sent it in the post, I'll forget to do it. It also just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable doing it. Because if, like, the result isn't good, I'd rather know that, like, there and then I can just get advice straight away rather than yeah. be, like, at home stressing out, having to phone someone up because, like, it's a result I don't like. Yeah. That's true. I, I suppose it's kind of good that we have, like, two different avenues. You can go in person mm. to get tested or you can have a at-home test sent to you. And the results do come back, like, pretty quick as well, so that's good. I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah. And a lot more people than you would think have STDs. Like mm. a ton of people get chlamydia. Yeah. It's like one in five or something. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, and if you get one, a lot of them are fairly easily treated as well with antibiotics. And it's not something to be ashamed of, actually. So I also, asked, this is, I think this is like a question that I was so curious to see what the responses are. What is worse, emotional cheating or physical cheating? 50, it was very close. 53.7% said emotional cheating was worse than physical cheating. What are your thoughts? I feel both of them are bad, but I mean, it depends on, it depends a lot on, on the situation. I feel like if it's a, I don't know, a situation ship or if it's a relationship, but at the same time, if we're just talking about the mental or physical, I feel the mental can be a little bit tougher for me. I don't know, I don't know. Um, it depends a lot on the situation, I feel like, but for me, the physical, it's a little bit tougher. The, sorry, the mental, my bad. <laughs> I'm curious what you have to say, considering you're engaged. Yeah. So what would you think? I mean, I put them on the same kind of level because either way, the relationship's over. There's not, it's not a thing where it's like, oh, okay, like you just slept with someone, so it's fine, we'll work it out. Like, it's just, for me, like, regardless of what it is, it's like, that's it. But also, like, I feel like people, the kind of definition for emotional cheating, I feel like is going to be different depending on who you ask. Like, if you say, like, oh, physically cheating on someone's like, oh, okay, they kiss someone, they slept with someone, right? That's pretty clear cut. But then... I know a lot of people will be like, oh, well, I'm dating someone who is friends with someone of the opposite sex, and that's not okay, and they're, you know, this is like a close friend of theirs, and they're telling them all these things, and it's like, well, that's not necessarily emotional cheating. That just kind of comes from like a place of insecurity. And then like being, being bisexual, right? If I had a partner who thought that way, I couldn't have friends no. because Every, like everyone would be a threat to them. So I would then be isolated as like, okay, so I'm only allowed to have some kind of emotional connection with who I'm dating. So I think emotional cheating is like a lot more difficult to define. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, I think a lot of people would take it as, um, take something that's a lot less serious and call it that. Yeah, I guess also, Going a little bit into that is also the, the emotional has feelings into it and probably you have feelings for that person as well. And um, yeah, I feel like if you have feelings for that person and you think that person has feelings for you and then they do something different, then probably you feel betrayed. Yeah. What do you think? I, th <laughs> I think I think they're both inexcusable. I don't think like either of them you could say, oh, I just you know. But I do think peop I think in longer term relationships, not that it, you would stay with someone simply because it, like who cares that they just physically cheated. But I think emotionally cheating means that they've like mentally left the relationship. I think mm -hmm. that you know alcohol can make you do really stupid things. I think people can make a mistake. Like, if you're in a long-term relationship, you're out, and you really do, like, you know, it doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it an excuse. But I think you can make a mistake and genuinely regret it. But I think emotionally cheating, there's more thought put into it. Because to emotionally cheat, you have it takes time to, like, grow yeah. feelings and to think of someone and to see them that way. So I feel like your relationship is probably, m the person 
values you a little less if they emotionally cheat on you than if they physically cheat on you, in my opinion. I feel like this question is really like geared towards if you've been cheated on, because I have. Mm. And I can say it doesn't matter how it is, like once you're cheated on, like it hurts. So I think both are like equally as valid, but it depends on how it was. Like mine was the physical one. So I like for me in a personal opinion, I'd say like physically is more important. Mm -hmm. But then like, I feel like if you were cheated on emotionally, for you that'd be more important. So I think they're kind of like, level out depending yeah. on which one's more important which one you've had to deal with as well i have never actually that i know of but <laughs> yeah. i guess i don't even know so. physically could be more important as well because then you're at risk of like physical harm yeah oh. definitely yeah. yeah 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 someone cheating on you and not using protection is betrayal yeah that's it's far worst. more like violating i feel that's not just like jeopardizing your relationship that's like jeopardizing like your futures your lives, your lives like yeah. it's a lot more intense yeah, your sexual health as well. So, I've also asked people, what is a relationship red flag? So I'm gonna go through some of them and jump in and say your thoughts. Um, and what, do you know what, we'll say yes or no whether we think this is a red flag, okay? Okay. Clubbing every weekend with single friends. No. No. I don't think that's a red flag. I don't think so. A little bit. <laughs> Really? Not for girls, but for guys it is. Uh, <laughs> because you're going to go to the club with your girls and dance and, like, sing and all that. But are guys really doing that at the bars? Like, I don't, like, at the club. See, like, I know the boys so really, many like, straight boys that do that. I know so really? many straight lads, especially at uni. With all their single friends. Yeah. They're just there dancing. I know so many of them that do. Especially because I feel like a lot of straight lads feel so insecure about having male friends that they make female friends because they don't want to have male friends that their girlfriend will cheat on them with. I guess it's a yellow flag. <laughs> 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 Something to take into consideration. Well, it depends on the situation, mm. I feel like. Because, I mean, I feel like you can also go for, to a bar to, to have drinks, talk to your friends, and then... I mean, but I guess if you're How going often? with single... Like... Every weekend? No, no Maybe like not every day. No, not every yeah. weekend though, but like, I don't know, let's say twice, twice a month. month. Yeah. Twice a month. Twice a month. Just to catch up with your friends and that's it. Yeah. Is this yeah. what you want to waste your Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> I think it becomes, I think it's a bit of like, depending on person, like an amber sort of flag. Mm -hmm. But I think it turns into a red flag if you're choosing going out with your friends over your partner and you're not having that quality time together. Oh, yeah. Especially if it's, the same, if it's like the same person, not so much same group, but if there's like one specific person that's always out with them, if like then maybe, I wouldn't say jump to the conclusion, it's a red flag, but to me that would be something I'd be like, I'd want to talk to them about it. Like if they're always going out with this one person, why? If you're just close friends, that's fine. But if you're going out with them more than me now, to me, yeah. that's kind of like a sign that there's something wrong. Yeah. And like newly single friends. Newly single yeah. friends are on the prowl and you gotta yeah. be careful with, re like you really do because your new single friend wants to go out and get wild. They just like, see red. Yeah, they, they see They get red. drunk, they and see red. And then if you're the friend with them, like if that was my boyfriend with his friend who just got out of a long-term relationship, I would be a little mm. like, you better watch yourself. Like, you know, <laughs> be careful. Well, I suppose it's all about trust then at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, saying I love you too early. Yes. Major. <laughs> so, yeah. Run. <laughs> Run. But when would you say it's the perfect time to say I love you? When you mean it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the sort of person that says I love you to everyone I know. And for the first like month with my boyfriend, I avoided saying it around him. I avoided like sending over texts to people just because I didn't want him to like me to slip up and say it to him in a, like a casual way and him think I meant it in that way. Because like for me, it's like if you say it too early, it's like I need to know you you, you mean it. I don't want you to just say it flippantly because I feel like it is when you say I love you to someone like you you're saying it because you do generally have a connection with them. Yeah. And I feel like saying it without feeling it kind of feels like you're lying. But I feel there is a lot of people that maybe feel it and say it and maybe the other person thinks it's a little too early. Oh, definitely. I kind of like what you said, though. Like, I say I love you so many people. Mm. You know, like, I'll tell my friends, like, I love him. You yeah. know? And then you get you don't want to text it over yeah. text because they don't know how they'll take it. But, I mean, after a week, I'll be like, oh, my God, I'm obsessed. I love him. But I Yeah, I think mine really was, like, like a month in and then I was like, love I you. And then it was fine. But I feel like if, like, you're, you're, like, two weeks and you're like, oh, my God, I love you. And it's like... If his reaction is like, you don't want that. Especially because like, if you don't, if you have a good connection, it could still get ruined by saying it too quickly. Should you say it like before or after you start dating? Oh, I think before. I think you should, um, oh no, because I didn't, so I can't say that. Okay. <laughs> That's why I, yeah. I always come to the question, when is the perfect time to say hello? Because there is, I, I mean, you feel it. Size. Size. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like, 
genuinely when you feel it, mm. but I think you, it needs to be like genuine. Like for me, like yes, like I'll say I love you to like my friends and that, but if I'm saying to someone I'm seeing, like I only say that when like I mean it, like I mean love. So when someone says I love you to, like I to the last guy I dated when he said it to me for the first time, I literally was like. Don't say that unless you actually mean it. Like, don't say it. I think it should be casual. I think it should be bad to be brought up. Like, if someone says it to you and you guys are like kind of in a disagreement or a fight, that's a major. Oh, you know, I think it should be yeah. Major manipulation. I think it should be really casual. Like, slipped out. Like, if like like mine was like we were walking to the zoo with like our friends on a double date, and I didn't even realize I'd said it. That's so cute, actually. I know. (laughs) (laughs) And no, it's I I like I get embarrassed about it, but he thinks it's adorable. Like, I I just said it, didn't realize until he brought it up, and then like my cousins said it to each other at the movies. I feel like it should be like, not like a big yeah, over the top. Like yeah. you shouldn't plan it. Like if you say it, just say it and then see what happens. But like in like cute small moments, not like a big, pro- it's not a proposal. Yeah. Like it's it's not like- It has- shouldn't be a proposal, no. yeah. yeah. Okay. So, girl and guy best friends. We had a lot of the uh, people saying, girl <laughs> best friend, guy friend. What are the thoughts? Because I think that like, if you're best friends before you get in a relationship with someone, then they have to accept that you're best friends. Like, that's not red flag. Why are you best friends, though? Because, like, if you already have the friendship... I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> if you already have the friendship and you both are good-looking people, why aren't you... Why? It, why? If you've never slept together, if they can be... Come on, why? It's, For what? And, and we talked about it before, but yeah. the thing is that... I always feel like best friends, there's always something behind it. A little. Yeah. Because your partner should be, your, you should be best friends with your partner. So if you have a female best friend, unless you're like absolutely not attracted to them at all, or unless they're a different sexual orientation, like why? I was, I was gonna say, we've, I've probably, you probably agree with me, like when you're bisexual, because you're, you're always put in that box of like, especially in school, the boys are all friends with the boys in school, the girls are all friends with the girls. So when you're gay or bi, you're in that middle ground of like, you don't really know who to do. So you often have friends on both genders. So I feel like for me, this question is like so irrelevant because I'm like equally my best friends are male and female. And so if I ever dated anyone who had a problem with that, then they'd have to go. Like I'm not going to drop my best friend because you get jealous because I'm into both genders. So I could be cheating on you with my best friend. But then I do see the point of view. There's no way for me to have like a safe friendship with anybody. Because theoretically, you could cheat, yeah. Despite the fact that I have absolutely no desire to, I, I could shag anyone. Like, yeah. who knows? Like, I love my best friend, but I, the very idea of it just makes me like, who? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, I have a guy best friend who, like, we're both free really clothes. We've both been in relationships with other people, and we're literally been like each other's ride or dies. But we've never like had any romantic mm-hmm. thought about each other or anything like that. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like they say that guys are only friends with girls that they would sleep with. Is that it, or that they never would? I've seen that on TikTok. Like somewhere. both are true. <laughs> but like both could be true. I wouldn't agree with that, but at the same time, like I feel it's a red flag if you're telling that best friend things that are more personal than your partner. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like your partner wouldn't know if you're telling those those things to the to that person. So it's kind of like. Uh, tough ground <laughs> to cover. Massive age gaps. <laughs> I think uh, no, right? Is that, massive? No. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's different for different people. Okay, so I I will defend this actually because I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will defend this. So I will defend this because I think like it depends at what stage in your life you are mm. and like how old you go or young you'll go like i personally can never date anyone younger than me but like i'm 23 i think i would date someone a, quite a bit older than me i'll say like 30. 30 is not a massive age gap no i think it's seven years I think that's like my parents like 10 age plus years 10 plus is, yeah is 10 plus is, uh, but i i'm i don't agree with the like being that being a red flag for example i don't think it's a red flag no. I mean, there, there is an age, I feel, I think after 30, it doesn't really matter. I feel like matter. the age gap isn't, it's not a red flag, it's like a worry. If like you're it's an 18, if you're an 18 year old dating like a 40 year old, that's like, not a red flag, that's a like concern. Like Leonardo DiCaprio, like that's concerning. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pattern, but in like, general. Like usually people outside of their relationship see it yeah. as a red flag, but usually the people inside of it, they, they if they are in, in their relationship, it's I mean, because they like each other. As 24, if I met a guy that was 25 and he had dated, like, a 40-year-old woman, I, I don't know if it would be a little, like, 
Mm. I would feel, I don't know if the, it's a red flag, but I would maybe feel like, how do I compete with like a woman? Yeah. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? But I think, that's, I think that's our age as well. I feel like older people would disagree. I feel like yeah. the older you get, like for example, like when, we, like when you're 18, the very idea of dating someone in two, like two school years below you is crazy. Yeah. But then when you think about it in the real world, that's what you do. Yeah. You date people that are two or like two or like years older or old, younger. So I feel like the older we get, the less yeah. we're like weirded out well, by it. The 18 year olds are starting to look grown now. It's yeah, concerning. it's really not, it's not helpful at <laughs> How all. How is this happening? <laughs> like I'll walk around like Colchester, like all the sixth forms. I'm like, you look older than me. Oh. <laughs> like you're four years younger than me and you, you look older, it's crazy. Okay. In a heterosexual relationship, whose responsibility is birth control? 81% of people said it was both. 15% of people said the male and 3% of people said the female. What are your thoughts? I would say I would say both, but at the same time you have to talk about it. I yeah. feel a lot of people just say, Okay, she's doing that or he's doing that, so I shouldn't worry about that, but at the same time I feel you you need to speak and actually make sure you're in the same page. I feel like people need to be more open about it. Exactly. Men should always have condoms on them. Oh, yeah. If you're a single man and you know you're going to see a female you, you don't have, have a condom, condom. that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't want to use one, that's Even a more. Flag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't care if I'm on birth control, but if you don't want to use a condom, I'm like, no, that's a red flag. Mm. Yeah. So. I, think, I personally think it's worse when like the woman says she doesn't want it. Like, when a woman goes to you, oh, I don't want to wear the condom, because then it's like you... Are gonna, like I, I know guys that felt guilty because like they've been told by no it's fine like I'm on like the pill you don't have to use a condom like I hate the pill and they're like bam like two two months later she's like oh so I'm pregnant <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's that sort of thing of like I feel like you both have to be open about like where you stand for it yeah. I feel like, like also like women should tell men more often the type of stuff they're using I mean I usually tell a guy like oh I have mm. an ID you know I would want them to know but I would still use a condom. use a condom yeah. Yeah. yeah if it's like the first time for example I feel like you should actually try and yeah use one use a condom yeah, yeah. even even try. if the girl just try just, yeah. <laughs> just try and, uh, see if it fits even even if the girl is telling you like no we shouldn't I think yeah and and like guys it. just like actually buy ones that fit yeah. <laughs> stop yeah. stop trying to overcompensate just buy one that fits like we we do not care <laughs> as, as as a bisexual man I can happily say we do not care. Just, just put one on that fits and is not gonna like mess anything up. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not just protecting against getting pregnant, yeah. but it's like STI as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, and I think guys shouldn't completely rely on being birth control because birth control just like fucks some people up, you know, with the mm. hormones and everything. It's painful. Oh my god, my idea was like one of the most mortifying experiences ever. So painful. Oh my god, same. I recently had one fitted end of last year and it was the worst thing ever. I had to have like a day off work and then <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, because they all, they just say, take a paracetamol like an hour before coming to the appointment. So I was like, oh, it'll be fine. No, it was a lot of pain. I had to like I also, email like <laughs> Kieran and be like, can I have a day off tomorrow? It just I was just in bed. It was the yeah. worst experience ever. Some people find it completely painless, but I found it horrible. I don't understand those people. No. I don't know who they are. They yeah. don't know where they are already. Well, it's when they have children already, I heard, or something. Yeah. Maybe they're just wires. Having children makes you get stabbed in the uterus? Oh my god, when oh. I did it, they, they had to, what's it called? They had to like dilate me. You know in the movies where they're she's like, you're dilated. All she's they doing is like the hand movements and I'm already oh like inked out. I just I saw that and I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. It was so mortifying. I was like, yeah, because like that's your service and get like a tool and like open it uh -huh. and shove it in. And it was the things we do for men. Literally. <laughs> I cried. I had to get the nurse held my oh. hand and I Same. cried. It was bad. And getting it out was tough too. Because oh. I had to get it out and put a new one in. Oh, I'm not getting it out. This baby's staying in there for like at least five years. Yeah. <laughs> it's not coming out. Anymore. At least they last. I will say that. Yeah. Okay, so we asked people what do they have any fetishes and kinks? And we got some very interesting responses. So you've got stuff range uh, neck kissing, uh, being called a good girl, um, golden showers, being tied up, um, spanking, um, outdoor sex, choking, handcuffs, domination. And do you know what? All I can say is, I am so like proud of people who felt like so comfortable enough to send these boxes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because it's completely anonymous. Like I have no clue who submitted these, but I feel like. People own their sexuality and are comfortable enough to be like, yeah, I'm into these things. 
And I feel like also being able to have a conversation with your sexual partner and be like, oh, so, you know, I'm into this thing, like, can you do this for me? <laughs> but I get it is awkward to bring up. So I think one, one thing on here that I did find quite interesting is um, blood play. That's gross. I'm sorry. I don't mean to judge <laughs> No, I take that back. I'm not judging you. Um, just but where are you getting it? <laughs> they did specify yeah. that it's not period blood. So where are you getting it? And they did also <laughs> said they liked biting and choking. Biting's cute. Uh, yeah, but no, I wouldn't want to like start bleeding. Yeah, like don't bite like, me. Don't trauma. bite me into like you're chomping on my skin. Like that's like borderline cannibalism. <laughs> like you're no, eating like me. like a nibble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I like I don't want to be like a bit bite and like hickeys and stuff, but bleeding for me, it's, I'm always yeah. that sort of person. Like, if it's gonna like like harm is like I know it's like a blurred line of like yeah. h what harmful is, but like physically like injuring me, I feel like yeah. that's for me is too far. I wouldn't want to like injure myself, like get cuts and stuff, or like break I've, a bone. <laughs> I've gotten bruised, and I was like, mm. that was right where the line was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What percentage of the time should be devoted to foreplay? What's, what are your thoughts? That's a great question. Um, I feel I feel at least fifty percent. And uh, we were talking about it before, but I think it depends also on the moment. That uh, because I mean sometimes you have time, sometimes it's something a little more quick. But I feel fifty percent or more. It's what I, I would agree one. I'm 60 fully. 64 play and then 40. I feel like four play for me is like, that's like the build up. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like you need that. And then like, you can finally get there at the end. Uh, like, <laughs> I'm not just about to start like get really deep into this. Um, but no, like I think, cause also four play is like so much more broader than, just, than sex. I feel like sex is just sex. Yeah. Like you can try as many positions as you want. You're still doing the same thing. Whereas floor pl foreplay, floor play, uh, foreplay, there's like so many different things you can do and like you can just have a bit more fun, I think, and experiment more with foreplay. Yeah. I also think it says a lot about like the sex you're having. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like if you just jump right into the sex, you're just having sex. Whereas foreplay does make it a little, I feel like that's even a little bit more intimate. Like it's like, you want to take your time yeah. with it. You know, you're really yeah. I feel like cherishing also, like, the time. The expectations as well. Like yeah. I, from like my experiences with foreplay, like you get a bit more excited being like, oh, like, 100%. especially if like you plan on doing something you've never done before foreplay yeah. wise. You're like, it's going to be fun, exciting. Like you get more excited for, the end result, rather than like for like sex, it's like sex is sex. Like I you don't agree. want it to turn like into like the nineteen like sixties where it's like sex is just sex. Yeah. Get it done, move on. Like yeah. it needs to be fun. No, I I, I would agree. I always compare it like to a good movie. Like at the beginning, always <laughs> you need some like kind of like get to know everything and stuff, and then you get to the like the perfect point, and then. You go there. I love that it's such a guy thing to do. Get to know all the bases, <laughs> all the points before the actual. <laughs> that is how you kind of get to know what people yeah. like and dislike, That's though, through yeah. foreplay. Because if you just jump into it, it's just yeah, yeah. it's like boring. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Any final remarks from anyone? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to Shag Week podcast. I'm the Femi, your VP Welfare, and we have a range of other activities and events happening for Shag Week in all three campuses. So do check your What's On page to see what's happening. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>